Yo, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube and another week, another roundup. I've got some cool tips for you this week. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. First up on the list is a blog post from Chris Webb from Across the Pond, and he's looking at how you can do line breaks inside of the formula bar for DAX. And if you're not familiar with this, when you go to create a new measure or a calculated column, you can have a formula bar there where you can type in your DAX expression. That can expand out and you can actually add line breaks. And depending on where you are, as you're typing that based on functions and whatnot, it'll actually automatically indent for you as well. So be sure to check out this blog post to see what this is all about and maybe help you actually code some DAX. And if you wanna take it to the next level, be sure to use something like DAX Studio along with DAX Formatter from the folks over at SQL BI to make it look even better. Teo Lakiv, and I'm, I, I think I always get that name wrong. He's got a blog post where he's looking at the differences between direct query and live connections. And he points out in this blog post that he doesn't compare it to import because when you're importing data, you've got access to all the features from a data capability. But when you use direct query and live connections, there are certain things that you may not be able to do depending on which one you're gonna use. And this is just a good list of what those items are and how they compare with what you're doing. So I think it's kind of a good cheat sheet. Maybe you wanna have it on standby, just in case you wanna know if I'm going direct query, if I'm going live connection and I'm not doing import, what am I gonna be missing? So this is a great list. Megan Lagoria has got a blog post where she states four questions that you need to ask yourself if you're gonna be going to Power BI Premium. I think these are really good questions to begin with when you're doing premium. They make you think about resource allocation. They make you think about who's actually gonna be involved when we go and use premium itself and how's that gonna affect the business. So I think these are great. Start out with these questions. I think there's things you also need to look at beyond these four questions when we start looking at resource capabilities things that we're doing inside of Power BI Desktop and who's actually putting items into premium. But stay tuned on that. Patrick and I are gonna have some videos and some content around those specific items to help give you guidance on that. If that's something you're really interested, go and let us know down in the comments. And I would love to hear if that's something you're interested in knowing about. If you wanna start off with these four questions from Megan, be sure to check out the link. It's down in the description below, along with all the other items of which I'm talking about and some bonus items. Did you know you can do shortcuts in Outlook? I didn't either until I saw this blog post from Chris Finland. I never even thought about it before, but Chris walks you through how you can actually set up shortcuts inside of Outlook. And what he actually uses to show you that is Power BI content. So if you have links to dashboards and reports, you can add those shortcuts into Outlook so that you can access those when you need them. And if you're like me, probably the communication tool I have up the most is Outlook. So if you're using Outlook, this is a pretty cool trick. Be sure to check out the link down in the description below to figure out how to do shortcuts. If you've ever gone into the data set settings inside of the Power BI service and you've had to configure a gateway for that, it's gotten a little bit of a facelift. So this blog post walks you through what those changes are and you know what to expect when you go to set up your data set for use with a gateway. I play with it myself. I, I went through it a little bit. Let me know down in the comments below if you wanna see a video on how to do that. But I, I thought it was a pretty good facelift. I thought it was more user-friendly than what it has been in the past and it was easier to configure and or install a missing personal gateway if I needed it. So if you've configured gateways in the past or you need to do so in the future and you wanna know about the new facelift for gateway settings inside of the data set settings area, be sure to check out this blog post. All right, my favorite item in this roundup this week, I've gotta go with the Outlook shortcuts. I didn't know about it, I'm in Outlook a lot, so I'm definitely gonna check that out. But I'm gonna pass this off to you. I wanna know what you think. What was your favorite item this week? Or did I maybe not cover something that you thought was awesome? Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below and share that out with everyone else and keep the conversation going. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.